Hey guys, I'm Josh. This is the HE1000 version two from Hyphaman. And this is, so far, the best Hyphaman that I've ever tried. It also happens to be very comfortable and beautiful. So you get beauty and brains. All right guys, before I hop into this, I have a PSA and a uh, kind of a thank you to Flux from Discord for sending this out for a review. Now the PSA is I tried Polar from Netflix, that new movie. Uh, I thought it was gonna be like a John Wick competitor. Definitely do not recommend <laughs> unless you're up for a comedy because it's hilariously bad. Anyways, just thought I'd get that out of my system. Uh, but again, thank you very much Flux for sending this out. And you guys can skip to these time codes if you wanna jump anywhere in particular in this review. Now let's go ahead and start off with build. So these ear cups, if you can't see, are absolutely massive and they're not gonna have any problem fitting around in anybody's ears at all. It does have angled pads and a beautiful color choice between the brushed aluminum look and the open grills and the tan accents. I just think this is a gorgeous looking headphone. Now, unfortunately, I, I can't really verify this myself, but it does definitely look like it. But I think the wood here is actually a veneer, which is a little bit disappointing. Now, I'm not sure what material they did use. Maybe it does sound better, or maybe it was Hyphenman cheaping out, I'm not sure. So this headphone is very comfortable for me, but I don't think everybody's gonna like it, specifically because of the size, because it does come pretty far down on your neck and does sit pretty high, um, and it's just overall a very big headphone. It's also not the most attractive thing when you're wearing it, but looking at it off somebody's head is very nice. <laughs> and I also don't really like the fact that the build is essentially the same as a lot of lower end models or mid-range models for them. And that was actually a complaint I had with the LCD line from Odyssey. It's like the $700 model to the untrained eye looks almost identical to the LCD4, which is $4,000. But overall, I mean, it has good looks, it's comfortable. Uh, I didn't have any personal problems with it. It doesn't creak or make any noise when you're opening and closing it, moving it around. So I can't really complain too much, but the cable is horrendous. If you're gonna buy this headphone, just buy it with an aftermarket cable because the other one feels like a balloon. It's weird. Okay, so it has an impedance rating of 30 ohms and sensitivity level of 90 decibels. It doesn't need a whole lot of power, but it does benefit from especially a powerful clean amp. Um, actually, this headphone sounded the best on the THX 789, but it also sounded fairly good off the one amp, but I definitely enjoyed it with a more clean and clinical sound. When it comes to sound, I, I like just about everything about this headphone. Um, they're massive sounding, they're spacious, and they're clean. And they remind me a whole lot of Stax L300 Limiteds, actually but with actual real low sub bass. I'll get more into that comparison a little bit later. For now, let's go ahead and break down treble, mid range, bass response, then we'll get into imaging and sound stage. So the treble is incredibly clear. Uh, it's not particularly forward nor recessed until you get to about 10K and then it starts to kind of dip down a little bit after that. And now I personally think this is a good thing. I think it makes instruments seem crisp and clear but not overbearing or harsh or overly analytical. It's definitely not a soft sound, but it's also not overly sharpened either. Now the mid-range is absolutely awesome. Uh, you've got like these softly rich vocals for artists like Sam Smith and Jackie Ivancho, and then you go all the way to a textured vocalist like Casey Abrams, John Legend, or a female with Kaleida. Instruments, especially their separation, is on par with stacks, just beautiful representation of most acoustic instruments like drums, violin, cello, uh, all were truly, truly exceptional on this headphone. <laughs> Gonna have to wait for this guy to stop playing his music. So one thing that sucks about living in an apartment and trying to make videos is that it's loud, like always. <laughs> okay, so for bass response, I think we've all seen the graphs. They go incredibly low, they're incredibly clear, and actually it's some of the most positionally detectable bass that I've heard on any headphone. Other than that, there's not much else to say. Highly commendable performance for me. Okay, so imaging and sound stage, and this is kind of where that Stax comparison comes in. So first of all, these sound amazingly massive on the right track, but also deeply intimate on others. Just depends on the recording. And this headphone's ability to tell the story of each song, to my ears at least correctly, is incredibly impressive to me. So why this reminds me of Stax is that both Stax L300 Limiteds, which is the only pair of Stax that I've tried and actually reviewed. I've tried a lot just out of fence, but uh, that's the only pair I've reviewed. They have the same sound shape to them. And what I mean by this, and like I explained in the Stax review, is that the imaging, specifically the imaging, the sound is massive, 
but the imaging is strange because on normal headphones, you get kind of this ball of imaging, right? And kind of the better the imaging, the tighter and smaller that ball gets when you're talking about a really finite sound. Now that same tightness factor applies to the Stax and the HE-1000s, but the imaging is more of a vertical line rather than a ball. I don't know how to explain it, it's one of those things where you've got to hear it to understand it. But the sound sounds massive because yes, it's super, super wide. The sound is like transparent in this very strange way, but it's also tall. It's vertically just huge. And that's what really gives it that massive sound. Same thing with stacks, same thing with the HE-1000s. Now I would say that the stacks have better kind of uh, in front of you sound, like it sounds more like it's coming from, from in front of you, whereas the HE-1000s have a better kind of surrounding delivery and don't seem nearly out in front of you, but they are definitely capable of, of giving you a good forward image, just not as capable as Stacks. And personally, if I had to choose between the Stacks L300s and the HE-1000s, I would choose the HE-1000s. Better build quality, they're not proprietary towards an Energizer, and they have legitimately amazing sub bass, something that the L300s were lacking. But overall, the imaging in the soundstage is getting a huge thumbs up from me. Okay, so my conclusion, and first before we get into that, this is the part of the video where I'm going to send people who bring up the Edition X or the Ananda in the comments saying that they sound the same. If you feel a little bit silly for commenting a little bit early, you should. You should watch the whole video before you comment about something. I have tried those, but only at an event I have not reviewed them, so I can't say for sure how close or how far away they sound from this headphone. They sounded great when I listened to them, but I can't give you like a, oh yeah, if you want this sound, get the Ananda or get the Edition X. I don't know for sure. Um, I have heard a lot of people say that, but that's just rumor, so take it as a rumor. But I will say this, both of those headphones would be absolutely worth it if they can even get 90% of this headphone's capability. This headphone is absolutely awesome. And overall, I would say that the HE-1000 V2 stepped up my kind of opinion about Hyphman. I really, really, really enjoyed this headphone with essentially no caveats. I mean, the build would be the biggest caveat, but it's it's also not something that's built poorly. It's just not built phenomenally well. It's just kind of right in the middle. It is at a steep price, but it's a damn enjoyable headphone, like it really is. And it makes me excited for the future of Hyphman and what they will have to offer um, especially with collaborations like the Mastrop Hyphaman Edition XX. That's something to keep your eye on, and I'm excited for it. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks again, Flux, for uh, sending this out for review. If you like headphone reviews like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions. I'm going to be in the comments for a little bit, answering as many as I can. Make sure to check out the description for current pricing and all the gear that I recommend and that I use down below. All right, guys, I'm Josh, signing off.